King Philip's War, Death of Philip. Philip, a Wapanaga, began the war that bears his name in 1675. The struggle was marked by ruthless slaughter on both sides with complete annihilation of the enemy, the one objective. Eventually, superior organized of the whites churned the balance, although King Philip was killed in 1676. The struggle dragged on. During the fight, the whites suffered serious losses of men, the great destruction of their crops and homes, but as a result, the Indian menace in the southern New England was removed. Bob's are some meat, where the meat is always sweet. No natural animals were ever heard in the making of any of our meat products. Well, fucking technophobe. Can you believe that bitch? I told her I may still love her, but I can't stand to look at her. It's not my fault. Enough modifications already. Listen, love, you can't just sit here. You need to order some food already. Um, I don't know, Robert. Uh, she may be your ex-wife and all, but uh, I think she's still pretty hot. You know, for a cyborg and all. I don't think you want me reading your minds. So someone will have to order. Well, I'll... Um... I'll have the chicken cordon bleu, hickory seared, with a glass of red wine, please. Okay, one blue chicken and a red wine in a sippy cup. You look like you need it. And it's for you, sexy. Yeah, I know. The whole death to you pot thing. But once that much replacement's done, I think that should count, you know? She shouldn't have to start over. 
Fine, I'll have a piece of cherry pie and a chocolate milk. I'll also have a glass of anything at least 151 proof. And another empty glass the same size, both large. I don't know, hon. It may be a little late for the cherry pie, but I'll go see what I can dig up for you. So what's your name? Misty. Yep. So, um, when did you become a serial killer? After the third one, I, um, hey, I am not a serial killer. I am the deliverer. I'm sorry, I didn't know you had a title and everything. So when did you become the delivery man thing? Has it been long? Tara, why would you want to know about... I'm not sure I have these holes in my actual memory. I, I recall bits and pieces, but no actual linear time. No line of events here. Uh, the doctors at Mickland Institute said it all started when I was a child. But I have so many mental blocks. My parents and brothers all went missing one day, and, and I was alone, evaluated and sent to Mecklen Institute. Had some laughs, met some people. Family ended up dead, found out they were delivered. I get the funds and buy my way out of the Institute, where I spent most of my time higher asleep. Great therapy there. Well, went home to restarting my artwork, met death, started working for her, then rediscovered the Deliverer somewhere in all that, met and lost Tara, not sure, maybe killed her. Oh, reminds me to pick up the medicine or Dr. Daniels will send out the police to do a welfare check on me. It couldn't be all that bad. What about this? Tara girl. Tara! You! You can never be Tara! Never be Tara. Why would I want to? S Why would I want to? She's dead and all. Good point. <laughs> Wouldn't have been the first time. Just last week at this place, uh, Dante's thing got out of hand. Uh, left a huge mess. This guy attacked a figment of my imagination. You know, death. What else could I do? World full of crazies. That's crazy. Me and my friends were going there that night, but we were late. Huzzah! One of those are mine. I'll need it so I, I can choke those, these pills down. No drugs. <laughs> no problem. Excuse me, but these are morning after pills. You see, when you shoved that broom handle up my dad's ass, he came inside me. So unless I, unless I wasn't a son brother, I will be taking these. Sorry. Tara was always good to me. She, she kept me normal. I want is to be with her forever. Montcalm stopping the massacre 
at Ford Williams Henry. The year was 1657, brought a serious English disaster. Fort William Henry had remained in English hands until that year, when its garrisons marched out before Montcalm, the last great man in New France. Then the tragedy occurred. Montcalm could not restrain the bloodlust of his Indian allies who set on the defenseless men. The French generals risked his life to halt the slaughter, but at least 50 were tomahawked before his troops put an end to it all. Hello, and if you've enjoyed some of our work that you've seen here, please do me a favor and click there over on Patreon corner, and you can see you can become a patron, and for like a dollar a month, you can uh, give me input on anything that you think would be good to continue on. So we do so much different things, and it's hard to see what people want to see next, so become a contributor as well as have an opinion on what we do next. Thank you. I would appreciate it if you could please go over and click on the subscribe and uh, hit the notification so you can know next time we have something new coming on. And uh, sorry for the uh, interruption, but back to the show. Patrick Henry in the First Continental Congress. A radical party not yet daring to broach independence and a conservative element for allegiance to the king soon materialized. Despite this difference, resolves were passed in which the colonies claimed the right to legislate for their own affairs and the right inherent in personal and political liberty. Finally, a compact was made not to import from or export to Great Britain. After certain dates, with this the Congress, with this the Congress which had served chiefly to unite the Whigs, adjourned. Minnesota Iceman In the history of the natural world to the supernatural, I found many weird things. But just because I don't know what it is doesn't make it supernatural. While the true heart of science is to always question even yourself. In the end, I have become an objective atheist. I am an atheist, but I want there to be more. This one ended up a good example of why I've gone through this whole uh, 
essay process of mine or a show called Damn Weird, where I was going through various things I'd studied in my youth, came to conclusions then, and, and readdress them all in the days of modern day scientific discovery, and see if my opinions still with, you know, still uh, were upheld, or possibly I'd changed. In this one, we have the latter. We'll go with the Minnesota Iceman was described as a male, human-like, six foot tall, hairy, with large hands and feet, very dark brown hair, and about three to four inches long, and a flattened nose. One of its arms appeared to be broken, and one of its eyes appeared to have been knocked out of its socket, allegedly by a bullet that had been said to have entered the creature's head from behind. Promoter and exhibitor Frank Hansen stated the Minnesota Iceman was discovered in the region of Siberia where he was acting as a caretaker for an absentee owner he described as an eccentric California millionaire. Sounds like Hearst. Oh. Touring carnival fairs and with this exhibit, Hansen was once reported detained by Canadian custom off officials who were concerned that the transporting a cadaver. While searching the evidence of Bigfoot in 1968, Cryptozoologist Ivan Sanderson and Bernie Huvelmans examined the Iceman in Hansen's house trailer in Altura, Minnesota, and concluded it was a genuine creature, saying they found putrefaction where some of the flesh had been exposed to the melting ice. In 1969, Huvelmans wrote an article in the Belgian Scientific Journal about the Iceman, suggesting there was a new species of Neanderthal called Homo Pongoindes, and theorized it was most likely shot and killed in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. Prompted by Hevelman's naming the Iceman Hobo Pongandis, the FBI was informed and the subjects might potentially be of a human victim, but the agency did not investigate it, possibly because they believed it was a hoax. In the Argosy, in April 1969, they featured the headline, is this the missing link between man and apes? Sanderson also spoke about the Iceman in television appearances and contacted primatozoologist James Napier asking him to investigate it under the official offices of the Smithsonian Institute. Henson subsequently withdrew the Minnesota Iceman from public inspection, saying the withdrawal was an order of its California-based owner. Hansen later provided a new Iceman for exhibit, described by observers as a latex model that was clearly different from the original. Napier's, in conjunction with the Smithsonian, made a preliminary investigation of Hansen's affairs and said that he found that Hansen commissioned the creature of an Iceman from a West Coast company in 1967, leading Napier to quickly conclude there was only ever one Iceman latex model they theorized was repositioned and refrozen between appearances. Napier stated that the Smithsonian Institute is satisfied that the creature is simply a carnival exhibit made of latex rubber and hair. The original model and the present so-called substitute are one of the same. The thing I find interesting here on this factor was we need to check that Bigfoot, we could call it, or Neanderthal or primitive man because it was a latex costume, they're saying. 1967 also matches up with the Bigfoot sign, the period, you know, the, the Gimlin thing. Same, not right there, but whatever quality made that costume could have made the other. But it also gives us a captured view of what was to be able to be done at the time in latex. Although it was only six feet tall, whatever could have been done on a latex probably could have been also taken to a full size uh, with supports even if necessary. Although I still support Bigfoot, but this is something that does need to be looked at, maybe x-rayed or whatever, get some good view to see what was going on there. Follow that with, in, in February 2013, the Minnesota Iceman was reportedly auctioned on eBay. The listing read, this is the actual sideshow gaff billed as the Minnesota Iceman by Frank Henson in 1960s. This is the one of a kind hoax that was fabricated in the mid 20th century it was reportedly purchased by Austin, Texas Museum of the Weird, owner Steve Busty, who has placed it on public display. Although it would make sense, 
he would not support there being another one if he wants to own the only one. But like I said, I would like to see it studied. Just the fact that it is a latex. And if it matches, then I'll rejudge my opinion on the period. What if it was the same costume that was shot it and then they went and froze it and sold it? No, the time doesn't match. But it gives us something to look at there. And that's the scientific process. Although I do believe it was a hoax. Do believe this is the one. Otherwise, it would raise the question of the quality. It could have been done in the 80s, and then they froze it and said it was the same one. Then we would have nothing. Either way, I would say a hoax. Although at one time, I did believe it was possibly a Neanderthal. I didn't believe the guy's story, the whole Siberian thing. I just believe he did that to place himself into the story of finding it. If he just discovered it, it could be argued as a historical item and not something he could claim personal and travel around the world with. And that, my opinion, has changed over the years, and that's why we do this. You need to take the ideas of your past and occasionally revisit them, because you may find out you weren't quite right as you thought. Thank you, and have a nice day. Paul Revere's ride. In the spring of 1775, Gage determined to break the gathering storm and dispatched troops to Concord, 18 miles from Boston, to seize the supply of colonists' military goods. Paul Revere warned of this decision by the prearranged signal, a lantern hung in the North Church rode through the night, warning the farmers and the Minutemen, a body of militia formed but a few weeks before of the coming British. He reached Lexington in time, but was captured before he came to Concord. and it's a pet snake that I have and that's my hand and everything. Pepperell at the Siege of Lewisburg, King George's War. With King William's War from 1690 to 1697 began the serious conflicts with the French. It was following of Queen Anne's War from 1701 to 1713 and King George's War 1744 to 1748. In the first, neither side gained. In the second, the English won Acadia, also known as Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and Hudson Bay. In the third, William Pepernell captured the powerful fortress of Louisbourg, only to lose it under the unwise terms of the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle. These three wars were the prelude to the last act of the drama in which the curtain was to be forever rung down on the epic of French empire in the New World.
perils of our forefathers. Two basic conflicts were inherent in our colonial life, one between the settlers and the Indians. Wars similar to that with the Paracois ravaged virtually all the colonies, and another between the English and the French. Both conflicts continued up to the eve of the revolution. The French held Canada, including the St. Lawrence and the Mississippi. They wanted the Hudson. The English wanted to push west, where outposts of the two-touched only warfare could settle the issue. 